All right, we are at the end of the semester where we are doing the final hypothesis test. So we have done categorical explanatory to quantitative um, response. That was the F test or to do the ANOVA test. This last week we did categorical to categorical, and that was the um, chi-square test for independence. And now we're going to do quantitative to quantitative for Pearson correlation. So um, before we get started in Python and, and doing the actual test, I just want to do a quick review of lines, because when you're doing um, the Pearson correlation, you can do other patterns, but we're doing linear. So we're going to get a linear regression model for our data and just might make sense to, to remind folks of this Y equals MX plus B kind of a thing. Um, so, so I'm going to pick a, a relatively simple um, equation for a line. I'm going to make the slope 2, so y equals 2x, and the y-intercept 3. If you don't remember y equals mx plus b at all, um, I'll try to go through this relatively slowly. But the idea here is, is that every point on this line satisfies this equation. So, for example, if instead of I have x and I put a 1 there, so instead of 2 times x, I go 2 times 1 plus 3. Then I, then I get the number 5, and the ordered pair, x equals 1, y equals 5, is sitting here on that line. So, um, oops, scooched out. Every single ordered pair on this line has this going on, where if you plug in the x, you get the correct y here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table. I'm going to um, quickly make a table. And so just put the formula 2x plus 3. So these are going to be the y coordinates, and these are going to be the x coordinates. And I'm just going to put some numbers in here, like negative 2, um, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and you'll see all these dots that correspond to these ordered pairs. So here's, here's negative 2, negative 1, here's negative 1, 1, here's 0, 3, all these ordered pairs that satisfy this equation and are on this table. And what the way you can sort of think about that 3 is if there is no x at all, or another way to say it, if x is 0, well, 2 times 0 is nothing, plus 3 is 3. That's why this ordered pair here is as it is. Plug in a 0, you get out of 3. And this is called the y-intercept, or, or the, the output value when the input is 0. But after that, or even before that, every time you increase the input variable by 1, the output variable increases by 2. So, you know, going from 0 to 1, you move over one unit to the right. But then to get to this other point, you'd have to go up 2. And so that slope, too, is literally telling us how much the y is changing by each time the x changes by 1. So that slope and that y-intercept are going to be playing out in our, um, in our Python results. So I just wanted to remind folks of this if you haven't done algebra in a long time. Um, all right, so done with that. Let me go to Python. So I'm starting with, um, let me just remind myself where I got this. Yeah, I started with week nine. Week nine did the scatter plots where quantitative was the explanatory and quantitative was the response. And because this um, Pearson correlation Hypothesis test also has quantitative as the explanatory and quantitative as the response. When I made the week 16 file, I did a save as on the week 9 file because all of that data management and all the stuff that's up here is with my quantitative variables, and I'm kind of set up to do what I need to do. And this is kind of where um, the week 9 ended. And so going on from that scatter plot where I see all these people, they have, you know, a little over, or they, what, they have eight siblings and um, they were diagnosed as a baby. This other person has eight siblings, but they were diagnosed with asthma at age 20. You know, all these dots have meaning 
based on the how many siblings you have is the x coordinate and the age you were diagnosed with asthma is your y coordinate but what we saw back when i did this originally there doesn't seem to be a pattern at all here doesn't seem to have any relationship between how many brothers and sisters you have and when you were diagnosed with asthma so that's what the test is designed to do, to kind of go through and see what's my p-value, right? You know, is, is there enough evidence to, to suggest that there is some sort of a relationship between these two quantities? So um, first thing I'm doing is I want to let you know that a lot of data management for the age diagnose variable, that anybody who was never diagnosed with asthma didn't have to even answer this question. So not just the people who didn't know or the people who refused to answer. I had to data manage all the people who were never diagnosed with asthma. It's inappropriate to ask them what age they were diagnosed with asthma. So there's a lot of NANs in this data set. Now, this works even with the NANs. It just skips the NANs. But the actual hypothesis test doesn't work if you have NANs in there. So the very first thing we want to do is drop the NAND. So I'm making this new data frame, which only has these two variables in it, and I've dropped all the NANDs. So when I look at the first 50 of those, it doesn't have any of these NANDs. And you'll kind of notice, you know, this has a NAND, this has a NAND, this has a NAND, this has that. Okay, here's the first person, index 13. Remember these, the Python's paying attention to, we're ignoring, well, I'm not ignoring it right now. Index 13. That person has one brother or sister, and they were age 12 when they were diagnosed with asthma. Then there's a couple more people with NAN, and then index 16, they have four brothers and sisters, and they were diagnosed at age 7, right? So when I take the NANs out, there are those four, first two people, and then everybody else who doesn't have a NAN in their, in their slot. So dropping those NANs is important to do. So I started out, and I made a completely different data frame instead of df now when i do stuff with it it's cd okay so that's the first thing i did drop the nands then i went ahead and i did that scatter plot again and it's you know it's really the same thing the only thing i did is i i did the uh, best fit line and i had that show up so this is the line that's closest on average to all of these dots and and, and it just doesn't look like anything's happening here at all. It just doesn't seem like it's a good fit for this blob of dots. But I keep going. And so here's the code. I have to import this package as SM. Tell the, the thing that capital Y, I'm using a capital here. Capital Y is going to be the age diagnosed, so that's on the Y axis. And uh, the X variable, the input variable is a sibling count. And then do your thing, and then here's all this stuff. And what it gives me, again, is a test statistic, which is pretty darn small. We're looking at test statistics like 10 or 7 or 15 gives us a small p-value. Well, this test statistic gives us a p-value of 62%, <laughs> way bigger than 0.05. What this is saying is there's not enough evidence here at all to suggest that, that these two variables are associated. So, so really, anything I might do to, to put these two together is kind of silly because there's not really an association. So I'm kind of done. If I were to go on, though, Python gives me these two numbers. And what they are is the y-intercept and the slope of this best fit line. So if there was a correlation here, if these two variables were associated, I'd be able to kind of predict what age you were diagnosed with asthma if you just told me how many brothers and sisters you had. Now that's silly because there is no association here shown. P-value is way too big. But, you know, I can kind of look at this line and go, oh yeah, this is the y-axis here where x is zero. And that is up, up at about 11. You know, this, this dot is kind of at that y-intercept, um, 0, 11.7946. And what this is saying is every time I get another sibling, every time the number of siblings goes up by 1, the age that you're diagnosed with asthma goes up by 0.0559. And so that's the slope of this barely increasing line. Okay, 
a little bit silly for this situation. So this is going to happen for most of you. Most of you are not going to get a p-value that's small enough. And so what I have done is, is I, I'm going to force everybody that doesn't have um, a small enough p-value to redo this test with these variables that I'm creating um, below for you. So you can do a bunch of copying and pasting, and, and I'll tell you what to do with with um, what you get here. But I'm going to do that in the next video. I'm already at 10 minutes, so hopefully I don't go to three videos, but I might. This is the end of video one. See you soon.